Hi, good morning and welcome to the ZP Developer Zone. So we do this webinar every um, Sunday at 8 a.m. London time and it's really designed just to be a, a sort of um, an update from the news from Zimmer Peacock for this week. So the first um, piece of news, I'll just jump into it, is um, at ZP we have a series of nanopores um, or nanopore technology. Nanopore technology is not something we've necessarily talked an awful lot about um, at ZP, but I think the sort of um, the description of what this is is in the name. There's a nanopore, and people use these tiny holes um, as molecules transition these tiny holes. They cause a change in in resistance or impedance, and you get a signature that something is actually transitioning through the pore. I just want to say um, good morning to Aftab. Hi, Aftab. Nice to see you this morning. And um, so, as I say, this nanopore is not something we talk about an awful lot on Zimmer and Peacock, but um, I think it is a technology that um, we will be pursuing in more and more depth, and we will be doing videos about it, and we can also sort of talk about it a little bit. But in essence, you have, for example, two solutions, which... Um, the only way, the only way these two solutions, um, let's say, can see each other is through a tiny little hole, the nanopore itself, and we measure the resistance from one solution to the other. So we're we're measuring the resistance across the hole, and then as things like DNA or proteins transition through the hole, we get a change in impedance, and that's a signature that a molecule is passing, and it can also be a signature. The, the shape of the signature can also be indicative of whether um, DNA or which base of DNA it is or whether it's a protein, for example. So, as I say, I know we haven't overly um, described or talked about nanopores in the past, but at Zimmer Peacock, we do have a really strong um, mechanical group. We have a very strong what's called MEMS group, our ability to fabricate in silicon. And so when you bring these elements together, you start to build um, the capability then of working in that in nanopore so nanopores is something that we will be um, pursuing in um, greater amounts in the future um slightly different subject now but we're also talking about um diy potential stats um i'm a big um at zimmer pigock we are we are big proponents of sort of making the electronics the least barrier to people getting into biosensors um, so when somebody contacts us with a sort of a new design for a, a DIY or low cost potential stat then we obviously we're quite happy to promote it I think it's like this when you're even if you want to develop your own potential stat because that's your master's project for example I think you need to actually have a potential stat at hand because you can't um, baseline, you can't understand the performance of your potential stat unless you're looking at another potential stat. So um, at Zimmer Peacock, we do get, um, you know, people tell us about um, new potential stats that they're developing. And, you know, we're happy to kind of um, promote those potential stats. Something that we're going to do in the future is come out with a common file format for these open source potential stats. And the reason we want to come up with a common file format is we realize that if we have a common file format for these potential stats, then the developers can have um, an output which can then be uploaded to Julie, and that will allow them to be able to develop all their electronics, develop, develop all their data capture, but then when they want to do the viewing and analysis, they can actually just upload it to Julie um, and have that kind of free um or have a viewer and anal analysis system in the cloud. So let me just summarize this a little bit. So at Zimmer and Peacock, we're quite supportive of um, the open source potential stat community. We do try to keep a log of all the different potential stats um, that are out there. The most recent one that we come across is called this kind of seed stat. Um, now, in order to kind of support that community, like I say, we I think we should come up with a file format that you know i'm talking to some of the engineers behind julie on this that means that an open source potential stat developer can develop to this file format then that means the developer can then upload that files off their potential stat up to julie 
and they can have a good user interface for at least the visualization and analysis of data. Because I actually think one of the biggest things in potential stat development is not the potential stat itself, it's actually the software. And so if Julie is able to offer a kind of a free viewer um, and data analysis for that, then that is um, great. I'll just go a little bit deeper into some of our news. As I say, this vlog and podcast that we do every Sunday at 8am is really just intended to be the kind of news from um, Zimmer Peacock for this week. This might be quite interesting that um, many parts of the world, um, we've got them in the UK, there's a lot in India, um, is pharmaceutical and biopharmaceutical development. Now, pharmaceutical and biopharmaceutical development, when they do their clinical trials, some clinical trials um, are done in a sort of very centralized way that a patient might receive a biopharmaceutical, their, mu- their blood might be occasionally tested so that they can see the um, effectiveness of this pharmaceutical. And um, that's a very centralized way of doing it. You know, you can kind of give the new pharmaceutical the patients in the clinic, you take their blood, you analyze their blood, you look for kind of improvements in the conditions so that you can prove that your new drug is um, is, efficacious, uh, is efficacious. Now, at Zimmer and Peacock, what we're able to do is um, we're able to help in the decentralization or hybrid, um, or de- when I say decentralization of clinical trials, rather than the patient coming to a clinic to be tested outcomes from this new biopharmaceutical you actually test them at their home or test them within their community and you do this through you know this is point of care um, diagnostics so for example if you were making a um, drug to help improve people's um, glucose control then you know there's plenty of equipment out there um, that will already measure people's blood glucose in their home but it might not be necessarily um, well connected to the um, internet. So you can't bring the data back to the clinical trial. Now, glucose is is almost like the worst example because that's probably the most instrumentized um, analyte of interest. But you could have something like troponin I, um, which is a sort of, is a marker for cardiovascular disease. Now with that kind of equipment, the connection between the handheld device and a cloud database is not necessarily so good. Um, the manufacturers of those kind of technologies might they might be more focused on the test and the meter and not so much on the database, let's say. So at Zimmer and Peacock, um, we are very interested in the support of um, decentralized clinical trials and also hybrid clinical trials, which is partly centralized and partly decentralized. Um, if the particular biosensor doesn't exist, so you you know if you have a biosensor that n that can measure the um, efficiency of your new biopharmaceutical, that's great. If it doesn't, then it has to be developed, and then Zimmer Peacock can be involved in that. But also Zimmer Peacock can be involved in just um, automating, or not automating, but connecting existing uh, medical devices or diagnostics to the cloud as well through our Julie database. So. Um, just a comment around how biosensors can not only help existing patients, but they can also help in um, the pharmaceutical industry in their um, clinical trials. Um, This is a little bit of fun, but um, I think this might be quite interesting to to some of our guys, including um, some of the people we work with, like Aftab. We we do understand the interest in or the merger between what we do, which is very scientific and often medical facing, and the consumer electronics world, you know, that at the moment, a lot of what we do at Zimmer and Peacock is described as business to business. Um, our end customers are probably also business to business because they'll sort of, they'll sell to hospitals or sell to um, healthcare systems. There's a whole, you know, big expanse of business, which is called B2C, business to consumer. You know, um, I would describe Apple as a business to consumer company because obviously they make products, they're a business and they sell directly to the consumer. I bring this up because I think in the future there will be a 
a blurring of whether you're a B2B business or B2C business. Um, and in order to understand this kind of B2C part, let's say, Zimmer and Peacock, we're going to um, CES 2023. So CES is a con consumer electronics show. I believe it's about um, just less than 200,000 people go. It's in um, Las Vegas um, in Nevada. It's always at a very interesting time because it's always at the kind of almost in the holiday periods. But Zimmer and Peacock will go and exhibit there um, this year. We'll take a number of our technologies and it will just be about really understanding the consumer electronics um, part of um, business. So I look forward to going there. Um, as I say, it'll be in Nevada in the USA, um, just it, just into um, 2023. And we did do our uh, ZP Developer Zone um, webinar this week. We were talking about pH sensors, and I got some really nice feedback on that with the pH sensor. Sometimes when somebody first gets a sensor, they kind of gather data, you know, but not necessarily know what they're looking for. So sometimes it, I think it's just reassurance. We also discussed immunosensors. We just, thanks, thanks to one of our um, collaborators, we discovered that pyrene NHS, which is an important reagent to us, is actually in short supply at the moment. There's a, there are lots of supply chains at this moment on, we've noticed it on things like enzymes, antibodies, now chemicals, Obviously, electronics, you know, there are a lot of supply chain issues um, in the world. So we had to overcome a supply chain issue. Um, we also had some questions about the um, Easy Flex, and we were, I think, able to answer that. We also had a surprise question during the web, but not somebody was asking about um, graphene electrodes. And then we said, actually, we do have graphene electrodes. It's sometimes hard to promote these kind of things because... I know with graphene electrodes that you know there are companies out there that have them, but they're so expensive per electrode. It's kind of inhibitory. Whereas these graphene electrodes are actually really quite a quite um, low cost. Um, so we were happy to do that webinar. Um, we also put some uh, information out about a conference that we went to in um, Norway. I spoke. Um, Evan spoke. We also had a friend um, from University of Southeast Norway, Professor Eric Johansson, spoke as well. So um, we were happy to speak at that conference in Norway um, a couple of weeks ago. Something that was, I've something that's been a long time coming. Let's say is um, at Zimmer and Peacock, we're always, let's say, trying to improve. You know, we like to receive feedback, um, and you know, as part of our duties at Swansea University, we have been improving our lecture material. And when you do try to teach something, you can obviously receive the feedback from people. And you can try to improve the way you teach things, you know, see what works, see what doesn't work. And so we have been um, improving some of our um, presentations, especially around the teaching of electrochemistry. And so we did an, a new introduction to electroanalytical techniques, where we talk about voltammetry, amperometry, potentiometry, in penis spectroscopy. And then um, we put a new video out there on that. It's something like an hour and 15 minutes, but we've had some very good feedback. So I do appreciate um, people who are looking at um, that and giving us feedback on it. Um, so I think we're getting close to the end here now. Just to say that this week um, at ZP, we've actually been um, in a conference in... Um, Finland called Ulu, sorry, the city was called Ulu, the conference was called um, Prince 22, and it was really about printed electronics. So at ZP, we do do a lot of um, printed biosensors. We make biosensors by printing, vapor deposition. We also do 3D structures where we'll, you know, so we'll make micro needles and kind of wire sensors. So I say all this because we're not just one form of fabrication at Zimmer and Peacock. We actually have several forms of fabrication, which I think makes us um, fairly unique. But we went to the conference. It was really well run. It was a really high quality of attendees and speakers. We appreciated the essentially the opportunity to go there. And it was a good way of emphasizing that. At Zimmer and Peacock, what makes us different is some companies only understand, let's say, the printed 
um, part of this. We understand the printed part of what we do, but we also understand the electronics. We also understand the communication. We understand the regulatory environment. I think we're a complete turnkey solution when it comes to electrochemical biosensors and medical diagnostics. So I will do a little um, wrap up now and say thank you very much to AFTAP for coming out on this morning um, and listening. We like to do this conference just once a week. I mean, not this conference, this webinar once a week, just about our news. So you've seen that we've been promoting um, DIY potential stats or, or um, open source potential stats. We touched on nanopore technology, which is not something we've discussed, but we probably will have to discuss it more and more in the future. We've talked about how um, ZP can be involved, especially through our Julie database in what's called decentralized clinical trials. We will be exhibiting in the US at least in 2023 at CES. We already have our ZP Developer Zone webinar every Thursday at 8 a.m. London time. I'm already building the material for the next one. We did exhibit in Census Decade a couple of weeks ago. This week we exhibited at Prince 22 in Finland. And obviously there's a new video out there um, electroanalytical chemistry um, and it's quite an extensive video so thank you Aftab lovely to see you guys and um, 